Pay no mind to the frog behind the curtain. I promise you this is not a troll. I seriously doubt this will reach you, Lacey, but if it does and you watch it, thank you in advance. To explain why there are only two genders, we have to begin at sex. Sex is a reference to a reproductive function. In sexually dimorphic species, we have the pollinators and the pollinated, males and females. In your chat with Romy Millennial, you said something along the lines of, intersex is a pretty solid third sex, and that's not, that's not correct. Intersex does not introduce a third reproductive function, and so it does not introduce a third sex. For example, there are some intersex plants that can develop fully formed and functional male and female parts and actually successfully breed with themselves and produce offspring. But that's not a third sex because it's only fulfilling two reproductive functions. There's no third function involved. There are even some animals that are capable of this. It's far more rare in animals than it is in plants. And most of those animals are invertebrates. But as far as I know, this does not occur in mammals outside of a laboratory setting. And in the forced conditions of a laboratory, many of the results have been... Well, they've been bad. Until the last century, the word gender only ever referred to language. As you may know, certain languages, French, German, Italian, have gendered words, masculine, feminine, or neuter, and those words may require gendered articles or pronouns to accompany them. And that was to what gender referred. It wasn't until, I think it's the 1950s, a researcher by the name of John Money uh, was examining behavioral traits and yeah behavioral traits of men and women that seem to stem from their sexual role from their reproductive function and he realized that sex was too specific a term he needed a softer word a broader term to describe the trends in these behavioral traits. And he settled on gender. And if I'm not mistaken, this is where the term gender roles originates. He determined that there were very masculine traits and behaviors and very feminine traits and behaviors. He also discovered there was a lot of overlap between the two. I'm not sure exactly when. I'm not sure specifically who, but it seems that sometime in the 70s, feminist theorists got hold of this gender roles concept and for whatever reason, cut it off from its biological roots. It became this nebulous concept, just a group of directionless ideas, not grounded in anything. And that made it easier to manipulate. Any new additions or manipulations of the theory of gender roles was no longer accountable to its roots in biological fact. There was no objective reference point against which to measure new ideas to determine their validity. Whether intentional or not, what they had done was give themselves the power to just make shit up. And over the decades, they did. With gender roles being a spectrum, because they are, and all that overlap, they determined that because gender roles are a spectrum, gender must also be a spectrum. The problem here is that gender... Gender roles are infinite. Because no two people will fill exactly the same gender roles on the planet, no two people will fill exactly the same gender. They'd given license to 7 billion people to claim their own gender. And in some places in the world, along with that claim on their own gender, claim their own pronoun. But that's only possible when the entire concept of gender roles is taken out of context, separate from its root in biological fact. 
once you retether the concept of gender roles and gender to its biological root, that's no longer possible. And you can clearly see that there are only two sexes and therefore only two genders. I, I hope that clears that up.